Well, following on the idea behind uh, the successful mission of the Solar Max repair flight, Dick was assigned as the commander of 51L, and there were five people assigned to him as a crew members, and he was so pleased to be the commander of that mission. Eventually, with all of the interest in the nation of who will be the private private citizen to fly with NASA. Will it be a reporter? Will it be an artist? Will it be a teacher? And lo and behold, they made the decision it would be a teacher. Then there was 11,000 teachers that competed with each other to be selected, narrowed it down to 10, and then finally to the one Krista McAuliffe. And, and then I think I heard that they said, you know, Scobie, you're the commander of this flight. You're married to a teacher. Would you mind the teacher flying with you? He came home to ask me what I thought. <laughs> I squealed. You could have heard me in the next state. I was so excited. Yes, it was tremendous that Krista would be assigned to his flight. Um, all the crew members gave her apples the day she, assigned, she came. I gave her um, one of my favorite mottos to teach is to touch the future because I was the teacher of all these programs, and she coined it for herself. I teach, I touch the future. Well, you can imagine with all the media interest that within, um, it probably wasn't two weeks that it became known, 51L became known as the teacher and space mission. It was all about Krista and um, the crew working with her, knowing full well uh, their identity. When we lost that mission, um, it was traumatic for the families, for our city of Houston, who had always been known as Space City Houston, and for our nation. So I brought the families together in my home to say, Dick said it was the mission, that was what was important. Can we continue that mission? And they looked at me rather strangely to say, we can't launch satellites, we can't repair any. But yes, June, we'll make you the chairman and you go ahead and create um, an education mission. And with that dream of Krista's and the other members of the Teachers in Space and a great, fantastic group of people that we brought together, including my college student, uh, Richard Garriott, who helped us with our design, and Bob McCall, who's the famous space artist who sketched, sketched it all out for us, we had the kernel of the idea. And then, oh my goodness, Alan, there were so many naysayers that said it couldn't be done. But, you know, persistence, Dick used to always say, you're so stubborn. I know that the euphemism for that is persistence. And I kept thinking, yeah, yeah, I can do this. And we did. Um, lots of great folks that helped us. Uh, President Reagan, at the time Vice President Bush, were helpful. Congressman John Glenn, they were all so helpful to give us contacts, encourage us. And eventually, the Lockheed Martins, Mary, uh, the Rockwell, the Boeing folks, they all saw potential in the positive mission continuing. And um, we opened the doors to the first Challenger Center in Houston two years after the Challenger accident. <laughs> so Challenger Center has been in business for 25 years. We are the leader of STEM education, science, technology, engineering, math. Back then it was called SMET, Science Math Engineering. But we, we truly are the leader, if for no other reason we've been out there for such a long time. But um, youngsters come with their teacher to a mission that they fly for themselves at a Challenger Learning Center, and there are 50 of them around the world. But they apply for positions, a job, they're a navigator, they're the capsule communicator. They're the physician monitoring the health of the crew. Uh, remote problems, they build the probe, they're engineers. They all have a job that they're working on. They have a mission. Their mission is a scenario to the moon, another one to Mars, another one to save planet Earth. 
They go out to asteroids. I mean, it's just marvelous missions that these students are assigned to. They work together as a team. So better than a computer game. It's a simulation scenario. It's a game in a, in a way. But they have to work together as a team. They have to solve problems as a team. And as a result, they gain confidence. You know, we've, someone who's really good academically is working with someone who's really good hands-on. And they see the team effort, how important it is, and support one another. And they always have a successful mission because my flight directors are educators and they help them learn and apply those skills they have to learn in the classroom. They use those concepts they're accountable for learning in the classroom and they're tested on. Those are the concepts and skills and the standards that we have an application for in, in our Challenger Centers. So that is the basis of what the kids do today. But, oh my goodness, these next 25 years, just hold, bar the door, Katie, because we have a new CEO president, Lance Bush, who is, um, he, he, he's going to set the afterburner. We're going to really move forward because there's so much more we can do. And we have a tremendous, even people at this conference who've come up to me to ask if they could partner, and they have these different ideas. I, I, I'm, I'm, it's a tremendous reward to see that, that, that it's the enthusiasm for education of the kids and the future for space exploration is right here at this conference. The people are saying, can we join in this effort? How can we help? And um, I'm signing them all up. <laughs> it's tremendous. We um, have virtual missions ahead. We have mobile units ahead for us. Um, Challenger.org is our website. And you can go there or to my junescobierogers.com website to learn all about the offerings, the teacher lessons, um, the programs that are offered, and support for classroom study.